Hey guys, it's me, Jenny. Don't you guys have one of those restaurants that you love so much that you wish they stay the same for years and years and years? Well, this shopping arcade right behind me is called Unma Sangha and it's been here for 44 years. And if you're looking for some good mom and pop restaurants that actually taste good, this might be one of the best places in Korea. I'm talking about some foods that are made with some generational knowledge. So me and my friend, we're gonna go inside, have some insane amount of food today. So I think it'll be a mistake if you skip a second of this video. Is it snowing or is it raining? It doesn't matter because the food market in this arcade mall, it's underground. It's like entering a dungeon in a video game because I'm going underground and I'm about to find a lot of treasures. Looks a bit shady and not gonna lie. Once you enter the arcade, it'll make you feel like you're back in the 80s when the mall was built. In fact, I almost thought I traveled back in time until I saw the people who got plastic surgery. There's all kinds of vendors that are selling food. Many of these vendors have been here for decades, so I can't wait to get a taste of some of that history. But before we start, I have to tell you guys something. Before we start the video today, can I share an amazing news? Well, I don't want to be a show off, but all thanks to you guys watching my videos, I got a new gaming PC. I mean, an editing PC. So ever since I started this channel, I've been doing all of my editing on this used gaming laptop and now I have a real workstation that I deserve. And the first thing that I did after getting my PC was to download and install the best web browser out there, Opera. One feature that helped me tremendously is their Tab Islands. Because just like a lot of you guys, I have this online ADHD where I can't really focus on anything when I'm on the internet. So I always have like 30 different tabs open and it gets really chaotic, you know? But using Opera's Tab Islands, I can organize my tabs in different categories like for learning, work, or entertainment and it's been super helpful for my productivity. Opera also has a built-in AI assistant called Aria and I've been using it for researching content materials so instead of using the search engine and scrolling through paragraphs, all I do now is to chat with Aria and simply ask questions. And there's another very important feature that you guys must know about. For those of you guys who take online security seriously, and you really should, Opera also has an integrated VPN and an ad blocker, so you can simply navigate through the internet without having to worry about your privacy. You don't have to let the world know what you're doing on the internet if you know what I mean. I also love their sidebar that has all my social media and messengers in one place, so I don't have to pull out my phone all the time to check Instagram. They also have a player in their sidebar which works with music streaming platforms like Spotify, Apple Music, and YouTube Music. That means listening to my songs just became easier. So guys, do yourself a favor and use the link in the description, download Opera for free, it's going to change how you use the internet forever. Now, should we get back to the video? Okay, why don't we start with some good Korean tonkatsu today. The place is called Harabaji Tonkatsu or Grandfather's Pork Cutlet. Their specialty is obviously their tonkatsu, and they claim that their sauce is made from 100% fruits and vegetables. It's actually my friend's recommendation, so I feel like this is gonna be really good. Oh, I know what I'm getting. I'm getting the cheese tonkatsu. Cheese tonkatsu and meon tonkatsu. Thank Apparently, it's been on TV before too. I, I feel like even their cream soup looks somewhat special. And their gakdugi, it's kind of like reddish kimchi. That looks really chunky. In Korea, cream soup is something that often comes with their tonkatsu. It's pretty much like a canned cream soup that you guys might have had before. And for most of us Koreans, this is our idea on what a Western soup looks and tastes like. Usually a lot of restaurants, it looks like they opened the packet and just boiled it. But this has like chunks of mushroom. And the flavor is like less sweet. So I wouldn't be surprised if they actually made it here. Ah, thank you. Okay, that's my friend's spicy tonkatsu. And this, this beautiful thing right here, is my cheese tonkatsu. I like how the sauce, the sauce has a lot of chunks of vegetables and fruits. Nah, that feels like a well crafted tonkatsu sauce. Not one of those factory made tonkatsu sauce, if you know what I mean. Let me have the first bite. That's good, healthy, thick enough tonkatsu. This is a handsome piece of tonkatsu. Okay, I like this place. There's a good amount of cheese, 
It's gonna get soggier over time, but the surface is really crispy. Enough amount of meat. It's not like Japanese tonkatsu where they have like a thick cut of meat, but it has a fair amount of pork. I think it's one of the very few times when I had a Korean tonkatsu, and I go, hmm, this is actually thoughtfully made. Like somebody cared about it, you know? Wow. I got cheese tonkatsu, so if you guys take a look, there's mozzarella cheese with the pork. Man, that is amazing. I don't do very well with spicy, but I still want to see how spicy it is. So I'm going to scoop up a little bit of that sauce, get a taste of that Carolina Reaper flavor. Oh my god, it's very spicy for me. And that's cabbage salad with salad dressing. As far as I know, that dressing is just mayonnaise and ketchup. Pretty satisfying to me. The amount of meat that's in this, it's ethical, you know? I can accept this. Sometimes when you get tonkatsu in Korea, the restaurant clearly wants to make the meat as thin as it possibly can be to save on the ingredient cost. But thankfully, this wasn't one of those places. You guys want some? I really like it. I think it's done some justice for Korea. But at the end of the day, this is like a $10 meal. I wouldn't compare this to like Wagyu steak, but did this make me happy? Yes. Is this worth a try if you guys are around? I think so. I would say this is a textbook honest Korean tonkatsu. And honesty, it doesn't come very often these days. Not in Korea or anywhere in the world really. Uh, well, I think grandfather should be proud because there was great food. I feel like there was a pretty good start. So that spicy tonkatsu just bombarded my friend's belly. So he went to do his number two. Meanwhile, I think I'm gonna get myself some snack without him. I feel like they already have enough sugar to begin with, but I guess me as a modern day human could always use more sugar. Hell yeah. If I ever get diabetes down the road, I'm just gonna blame Korean small business owners. Is that enough sugar? I'm not sure. There's one thing about me, I do love a good hot dog. This is like the fattest hot dog that I've seen. Usually it's supposed to be like super thin, filled with sugar, but this is like an actual like Krispy Kreme donut size. Mm. So the ones that I've experienced before that I'm used to, they're like super thin and very um, crispy. This one's very soft and fluffy. Take a look. I say this in every Korean street food video, but hot dog is one of my favorite Korean food. And I must say that this hot dog, although it is different in style, definitely meets my standards. There's so much sugar in this. It had pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, and sesame seeds. I really like seeing some nutty flavors in hot dog. I must have been a hamster in my previous life. Just look at this. There were parts of the brown sugar that wasn't completely melted, and I think it might have been better if it was. Hmm. There was definitely a different kind of hot dog. Sometimes people make their food too differently and it's not even good, but that hot dog was good. Now here's their fresh donut. Korea has their own style of donuts. Why do they call it fresh donut? Not really sure, let's find out. Hmm. I think this donut is rice based. The donut part, it feels a little bit like um, Castella, if you guys know what that is. It's actually right here. It feels very much like one of these Castella, but deep fried. Inside, there's this white thing called angum, I believe. Where does angum come from? Maybe I should ask that gentleman. So angum here, it's very sweet. It's kind of like red bean paste. Supposedly, this comes from beans too. Very sweet, I like it. Learning new things about Korea every day. There was enough sugar to impregnate me with a freaking gummy bear. Let's go have some more sugar. Okay, I'm a big boy. I'm still very hungry. So I think I'm gonna get myself some kalguksu and sujebi. This was one of the more popular restaurants here, and they only sell kalguksu and sujebi. Well, fine. It's not my first time getting rejected by a Korean female individual. Although, no matter how many times I experience it, it hurts just the same. 
So this particular restaurant, they have kalgoksu and sujebi. Kalgoksu is hand-cut noodles, and sujebi, I believe, is pretty much the same thing as the noodles, but instead of cutting it into noodles, they just pinch out chunks of that dough, and you just eat the boiled chunks of that dough. They have the option called sakwasa, which is like half kalgoksu and half sujebi. It's only 8,000 Korean won. Two things that Koreans cannot live without. One, League of Legends, and two, some good kimchi. We love kimchi so much that in many restaurants, they just put a jar of kimchi on your table and you serve yourself as much kimchi as you want. This kimchi looks more handsome than me. I take it back, that's impossible. But it does look very good. So there's my half kalguksu and half sujebi. Let's see what's in this. So this is sujebi. Like I said, these are like chunks of boiled dough. And they also gave us some noodles here, which is pretty awesome. Let's taste that noodle first. Mm. Let me tell you, the impression that I get from this kalguksu, it's kind of similar to how I felt at the tonkatsu place. It's not like, oh my god, I've never had anything like this before. But it's like very well made, textbook kalguksu. Very reasonably priced. All I'm trying to say is that these aren't supposed to blow you away. But at the same time, they're giving you what's fair. Kalguksu and sujebi in their most traditional form, served clean, with good portion, and for a fair price. Let's scoop up some of that sujebi as well. I'm not 100% sure if the sujebi came from the same dough as the noodles. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. I think the best way to describe it is that it's kind of like rice cake, but not as chewy. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do what a lot of Koreans do, which is grabbing this fat chunk of kimchi, getting some noodles with it, some kalguksu noodles. This is probably how our great-great-grandfather had it too. That was really good kimchi. Mm. I'm gonna have this sujebi with kimchi too. I think my favorite item was their kimchi, which is ironically served for free. I'd like to talk to you guys about something. A lot of my viewers messaged me saying that they went to Korea and they were a little disappointed because a lot of the restaurants seem to be like kind of a ripoff. And it breaks my heart to hear that because I know that's true. As tragic as it is, real life is in K-drama and, uh, and a lot of these people that look like wholesome K-drama grandmas, they can make you some food and charge you a ton for it too. So you kind of have to do your research. Thankfully, this wasn't one of those restaurants, but be careful out there, guys. Okay, here's another restaurant that is also insanely popular here. It's a restaurant where they have Korean street food. And I heard that this restaurant's been here for over 30 years. I mean, for them to stay in business for 30 years, they must be really good. Let me get a bunch of food. Oh, I feel like this is a pretty awesome humble meal. What do you guys think? So starting with our main dish, that's I showed you guys tteokbokki a bunch of times before, so I got a special kind of tteokbokki this time called cheese tteokbokki. So it's not just tteokbokki that you guys might be familiar with. This one has ramen instant noodles and also mozzarella cheese melted on top. Therefore, they call it cheese tteokbokki. This isn't something that I ordered. This is something that they just give you. It's fish cake broth. It's very nice and warm. Also cannot forget to get some tigim, assorted deep fried food. Thank you. Wow. some rice cake too. And here's our good kimbap. This is rice and a bunch of other things that's rolled up in a dried seaweed. All right, children, ready for some food? I want to start with the um, lapoki, obviously. Melted cheese with tteokbokki. You guys know, I don't always support Koreans adding cheese to everything, but I must say, tteokbokki is an exception. It definitely makes the tteokbokki taste better and less spicy for me if I'm not imagining. I also love the addition of this instant noodle because eating just the rice cakes can get old quickly, you know? It's almost like getting another spicy noodle dish. Both the rice cake and this instant noodle is super chewy. And with the cheese, even better, my friend. You know, their rice cake is good, but I feel like their ramen noodles, it adds so much to it. I feel like getting this rapoki is like a must try. The cheese 
면이랑 굉장히 잘 어울려. I'm pretty hyped up for this chigim as well. Oh, I, I want to get that first. Fried boiled egg. Because any extra protein is good for you. Usually when you order chigim, they just give you the fried food but not the tteokbokki sauce. But I like how they almost turn it into a tteokbokki for you. This is the same tteokbokki sauce that they scooped out from a bunch of tteokbokki. That becomes the sauce for the fried food. Us Koreans, we love it. I don't always like the Korean approach to food, but this approach, I can get behind this. Chigim is kind of like a side dish to tteokbokki, but I personally like chigim more than tteokbokki in most places. Here's the official picnic food for the Koreans. I grew up as an abused child, but even my mom would make this for me when my school had to send us on a picnic. If you guys look at this carefully, there's uh, pickled radish, egg, factory-made ham, carrots, uh, imitation crab. And does it taste good? You're damn right it does. When you go to a tteokbokki restaurant, what you can also do is grabbing this kimbap and you just dip it in the tteokbokki sauce. Yeah, some things just need some extra spices to be enjoyable. Like the people that grew up in a family environment that's way too happy. <laughs> it bothers my friend that I'm eating the kimbap starting in the middle. Usually people would start from one side and reach the other side. But me, I find comfort in this order. That's how I live my life, dangerously. Yeah, this cheese, it makes it so much more delicious. That's some good white privilege right there. It's okay to say that, right? When you eat a bunch of tteokbokki and it feels a little stuffy in your mouth, then you get some of that fish cake broth. Mm. Wash it right down. You know what I like about this place though? Not just this one restaurant, but all the restaurants that I've been to today. I like the fact that they're all very reasonably priced. So this mall is located in Gangnam, which is a very expensive patch of land. And a lot of restaurants tend to charge a premium on their food just because they're in Gangnam. But the price of the food here in this arcade, it's super reasonable and you are definitely not getting robbed. Generally good quality too. You know, eating this kimbap, it reminds me of that one story. <laughs> I know guys, I have so many stories that it almost seems like that I'm making these up. But I am not making these up. It's just that I am old and I lived a life. So the story is, I was in elementary school about two times a year in Korean elementary school. We used to go on a picnic as a group. When we do, everybody packs their kimbap. Usually their mom makes the kimbap. We didn't really buy them. My mom used to make kimbap for me too. But one day I just decided, hey mom, I have to go on a picnic, but I'm kind of getting tired of kimbap. So can you just buy me some bread instead? And my mom's like, are you sure? I was like, yes, I am sure. So my mom got me some bread from a local bakery. I brought it to school. We went on a picnic. It's lunchtime. Everybody pulls out their lunch. And my teacher saw my lunch and she was like, hey, what's wrong with you? How come you don't have kimbap? And I was like, oh, I just don't have kimbap today. I have bread. And she's like, oh my God, that is so sad. Everyone, everyone. And many of the kids from my class came up to me and they were like, hey, here, take some of my kimbap. My mom made it. And it was really heartwarming. Even the most mean girls that used to make fun of me for being fat, they came up to me and they were like, take my kimbap, fatty. And I was like, wow, you guys have a heart too? Turns out they do. Although the next day they went back to calling me samgyeopsal, which means pork belly, which is like unfathomably mean. Anyway, that's the story. I gotta say, their chiju rapokki is hands down my favorite. There's just something special about having cheese, instant noodles, and some tteokbokki sauce together. It is quite a combination. If you guys thought that was the end, I must let you guys know that there is a dessert in this restaurant as well. This is called bong ice cream and it's my first time seeing this as well. Oh, thank you. So here's my bong ice cream, which means puff ice cream. Reason being, these round things, it's called bong tigi, which is like a flattened rice puff. And if I open this up, there's ice cream inside. That looks like a good dessert to me. There's just really milky ice cream inside. The bong tigi itself doesn't taste like it's much. It just has a really light and crispy texture.
The ice cream itself is whatever, but it's a nice dessert to have after having some spicy food. I would have loved to have you guys come here, but unfortunately they're closing down their business after 30 years of operation due to the health issues of the owner. But don't worry, there's another tteokbokki restaurant right next to it called Chigi Majashi, which is even more popular. So you guys can just go there instead. Having all that tteokbokki made me really thirsty, so I decided to get my favorite traditional Korean beverage, and it's called Shikke. This gray liquid with rice particles in it, it's called shikhe. I've shown you guys a few times before. It's kind of like kimchi. It always tastes different depending on where you get it from. But I always like it. As far as I know, this is fermented drink. They ferment the rice using malt. It's extremely sweet. And it's really fun to chew the grains of rice here. Mm. This is good Korean tradition. On our way out, I found this coffee shop where the owner was clearly obsessed with making great coffee. And since we were both suffering from too much food in our belly, we decided to sit down for some coffee. Every meal in Korea must end with a coffee. I'm the kind of person that thinks 99% of the coffee tastes the same, but I feel like there's a nicer quality to this place. It's hard to explain. I asked the owner about how these are made, and that turned this quiet gentleman into Walter White of coffee. That's a lot of information, yo. It was like I started talking to the quiet kid in class about anime, and he just suddenly turns into a different person and doesn't stop talking about anime. But you know what? I love seeing him being so passionate about his work. That explains why this coffee is so good. I don't know much about coffee, but that was really great coffee. And I think with that, it is time to escape the dungeon. Alright, I think that's enough food for one day. So what did I think? Like I was saying earlier, they're very affordable. I think a lot of what they have is textbook good Korean food. It's like the Korean food the way that our ancestors had it. So I think there's something really special about that. Just don't expect fine dining meals here. Then you're going to have a good time. Thank you guys so much for watching me today. If you guys got time, go ahead and watch my other videos too. And listen to my songs on Spotify, okay? Goodbye. Also, I'd like to thank Oprah for sponsoring this video. Guys, go download Oprah. It's awesome.